good afternoon and uh, welcome to our lesson today where i would like to talk about the office okay so i hope the notes that uh, we had written before on the organization structure the different types of uh, organization structure you've all been able to write them and that with the audio and the video that i've sent you you are able to understand but just in case you need any clarification kindly let me know and i'll be able to take you back uh until you know until i'm sure that uh you're okay with uh with it okay so i want to talk about the office i'm sure most of you have heard the word office yeah you know somebody says come to my office or i'm going to the office yeah so office is a very common word and i am sure in one way or the other you've gotten an opportunity to go to an office okay now an office is very important in an organization why is it important to have an office yeah because you know some activities can only be carried out in an office therefore an office is generally a very important uh, room in an organization where certain activities have to take place therefore how do we define an office we say an office is a room where there are administrative work is to be done okay it is a room where certain activities are carried out when we talk about administrative duties what duties are we talking about like account duties HR duties, sales duties, you know, those are duties that are performed in an organization and they are normally carried out in an office. Okay, so it is very important for you to be able to understand, yeah, the definition of an office. Okay, and I'm sure we've all seen offices. Okay, we've been to an office before and you've seen, like if you came to our school, we have the uh, the reception area, which is an office. Yeah, an office doesn't have to be big. Yeah, it is a room where certain administrative duties are carried out. Okay, then what are some of the functions of an office? Why do we need to have an office? office okay we say an office is important okay because it is used yeah to receive yeah and share out information for example the first time when you came or when you joined uh, this institution you came into an office where you are given certain information about the school okay yeah so that time the office acted as a area where you received information and even as you received information i am sure when you you there's some information that you also give out okay so in an office we receive and we give out or we collect information from people so it is an area where we receive and we collect information okay then we also say an office is also used to prepare records of information okay so sometimes you would find yourself in a scenario where you need certain information so that kind of information is kept in an office so we say an office is used to prepare records of information we also say that an office is meant to supply ready-made information to the authorities okay yeah when you talk about authorities we are referring to government offices or different organization so they know like for example if i sent you to an office to get certain information you should be able to get 
that kind of information okay then we also say we have what remember we said we have two basic uh, functions of an office okay and uh, one of it is the basic or the routine function and we've got the administrative management functions of an organization or of an office so what are some of these uh, functions of an office in regards to administrative and management functions okay so we say the office is used as an administrative function for the manager which includes the planning the organizing the staffing directing communication etc yeah so they're trying to say this is where certain uh functions that revolve around an organization the management organization are carried out we've mentioned about the planning the organizing the directing the communication the controlling coordination etc okay we also say some systems are also developed in an office you know some systems some procedures yeah are developed within an office okay then we also say an office is also used for purposes of personnel uh function so talk about personnel functions we are referring to the recruitment you know that's why when you're applying for a job okay and you are called for an interview. You know, we have so many cases of people being conned and everything, yeah? Or being told, okay, uh, come to, let's meet on the street, uh, give me your CV or give me this and then I'll be able to give you this, yeah? So some processes like personnel, okay, like recruitment, those functions are carried out in an office. Don't, so don't allow yourself to be cons you know make sure if you've been called for an interview go to an office don't meet somebody on the streets yeah we have people we call people who say they have uh, they have uh, they claim to have briefcase offices you know they can meet you everywhere and they can tell you no yeah especially when it comes to uh, employment it is important for you to go to an office so because this is where some of those functions like recruitment takes place okay then we also say an office is also used for purposes of maintenance of records now maintenance of record means what in case you need any information about certain details or about certain areas yeah this information would be made available in an office okay then we also say an office is also used for purposes of safeguarding the assets remember when you have an office you've got so many assets yeah so assets are like what you've got cars you've got photocopiers you've got uh, computers you've got furniture yeah so you've got all sorts of equipment okay so an office acts yeah as a place where you are able to serve, to safeguard your assets yeah maybe when you have a car for the organization you can also pack it within the office premises so an office is used for purposes of safeguarding the assets of an organization. We also say an office is also used for public relations. You know, public relations refers to what? It refers to the relationship between our organization and the outside world. Outside world means people who don't work within our organization okay that's why you find when there are issues to do with certain things yeah the pr of the public relations office is concerned with some issues like sometimes when there's a bad reputation about a company or when something has happened about a company some of these issues are handled at the pr office in 
an organization. So we say the organize the office also acts as a as as an area where the general public is given certain information. So it's important for us to be able to know what are some of the functions of a PR or a public relations office. Okay, so this kind of uh, office is meant to give uh, suggestions or uh, information to the public and to warn them, okay, to warn them of unfavorable reactions, okay. It is also meant to communicate the company's policies and action. Okay, so we'll talk about companies policy. Sometimes you might get to see, and I'm sure maybe you've seen some of these uh, advertisements. Maybe a company has been accused of doing something. So what they do, they come up with, uh, uh, you know, maybe an advert saying, or oh, we are aware that this information has reached the public domain. So please be warned that we are not doing that, you know. So this information is normally relayed to by the, uh, by the public relations office. So it is important for you to be able to understand what this department does in an office or in an organization. Okay, so as we say that, it is important also for us to be able to understand, you know, we've been able to define an office as an area where administrative activities are carried out. Okay, administrative activities are carried out. So it's also important for you to be able to understand how many types of office layout do we have we talk about layout we are looking at the different office design okay i'm sure if you went to maybe one of the offices for these uh, the ministers yeah they have what we call the you know like uh they have different layouts of offices the offices are quite huge they have some flowers there they have some screen you know they have some wall-to-wall -wall carpets yeah so this these offices are also classified differently so it is also good for us to be able to know the different layouts of an office okay so we've got what we call the traditional office space okay so this kind of an office yeah is uh, meant or it's suited for large or small business but now this depends with the business you know when we talk about traditional we say it is the you know it's one of the old methods or one of the old layouts of offices Okay, so we have the furniture that is placed in the office indicates also the type of business and who occupies the office. Okay, so this is now where you'll find maybe the subordinate staff will get to sit there. Okay, then of course we've got the open plan offices. Now the open plan office, if you've gone to the bank, okay, uh, just when you pass the tellers, there's normally, I'll, 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 you know, uh, some other personnel who work there, okay? And they have a place where they sit on their own. But now when you go there, you're able to see different types of or different people seated in their banking hall, yeah? And it is open, yeah, it is not enclosed. Okay, now this type of uh, people, when they sit in those offices, yeah, they're able to serve individuals as they live, as they live. So that kind of an office is what we call an open plan. Yeah, open plan means it is open, but the desks have been placed facing different directions or facing the same direction so it is not they're not in an, an in an enclosed office okay then 
we have another office that we call the landscape okay we also have the landscape office now the landscape office but it is important for us to be able to understand uh, or to be able to define what an office layout is okay so basically this refers to the arrangements yeah how an office is arranged that is what we call the layouts okay yeah so and we say it is important for us when we are planning to have an office layout to consider certain factors okay like for example does it make it easy for a smooth flow of work for example i am seated this is this is an accounts office now the accounts office uh in case i need some information about certain things before maybe i make payments yeah and maybe the person who is seated next to me comes from a different department yeah so the layout should be arranged in such a way that the person who sits next to me we have some interrelations yeah in case i need some documents from them it is easy for me to get that document therefore the office layout should be arranged in such a manner that it will be very easy for me to get that information so, so there is a smooth flow of work okay we also say the floor space should be as free as possible to permit free movement yeah when you look on the floor yeah it should not have so many furnitures or so many equipment on the floor so that when I, I move from my chair i should be able to walk freely to somebody else okay then we also say for purposes of easy supervision of staff good and efficient appearance of the office desk should be arranged in a standard plan so for example when you're in an open plan i remember i said you are able to see so many other people so as a supervisor i'm able to monitor what that person is doing okay what the other person is doing okay we also say uh, equipment another factor that we need to consider when you're setting out an office layout is the equipment equipment should be uh, arranged in such a manner that it is within the reach of the staff who use it for example a photocopier yeah so a photocopier that is normally used by a, a group of uh, staff should be in a central place where it is very easy for them to photocopy or reuse that equipment okay then we also need to consider the number and the i mean the space between desks you know should be allowed in such a way that employees should be able to leave and reach his desk without having to disturb any other member of staff for example when i'm seated here okay and i need to leave my desk okay so when i when i stand to leave i should not be able to distract the other person telling them oh just stand i need to pass let me pass no yeah so there should be enough space between me and my chair so that when i need to leave i'm not going to disrupt any other or my colleague Okay, so it is very important for us to be able to know this. So we've got different types of office layouts. We mentioned about the open plan. Yeah, we also mentioned about the traditional and we also mentioned about the landscape. Now, landscape means what? Landscape is a type of an office that also has got certain features when you hear the word landscape office it's got certain features what are some of these features of a landscape office now a landscape office 
is that kind of an office that wants to bring out the natural effects in an organization okay like you've gone to offices where you see they have indoor plants okay you've also gone to some offices where you see the kind of a ceiling they have put on top you are able to see the light that the sunlight comes in directly so when you hear the word landscape what should come into your mind is the natural effect trying to bring out the natural effects yeah in an office by doing what by providing things like flowers you know putting the some flowers in pots that grow we also have uh, some ceilings that are able to bring in light natural sunlight okay yeah sometimes you could also see on the wall they have put some birds you know some pictures of birds or some pictures of wildlife so basically that's what we mean and then maybe also when you look at the carpet it's got wall to wall carpet wall to wall carpet means the whole area is occupied with or it's been fitted with a carpet okay so therefore that's what we mean by a landscape of so we've got three types of office we've got there a uh, cubicle cubicle is the one that maybe an executive would sit alone we've got or what you call an enclosed then we've got the open plan open plan is now where we have so many people sitting in one area and we've got the landscape now this landscape is fitted with some or it's meant to give bring out the natural effect in an office okay so this is very important for you to be able to know that now we've got a uh, different personnel different personnel means different type of people work who work in an organization so we've got different type of people who work in an organization so i've given you the the uh, the um, the levels we have got the chief officer yeah we've got the assistant we've got the manager we've got the personal assistant the receptionist yeah we've got qualities of a good employee what are some of the qualities that a good employee should have they should be able to communicate effectively they should be self-motivated you know yeah they should be able to be they're supposed to be honest they're supposed to be ethical ethical means doing things the right way they should be disciplined yeah they should avoid gossips etc okay so i hope up to that point we are clear i'll see you in the next uh, video where i would want to talk about filing uh, have a nice uh, weekend and bye for now.